Hi guys, here I'm going to show you how to sum cells based on their cell color in Excel. And that includes background cell color as well as any conditional formatting colors that may have been applied. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. So unfortunately, there's no built-in functionality for this in Excel. So it's going to require a few steps to be able to sum cells based on their color. Now what I'm going to do in this tutorial is to first go over the steps required to do that, show you how to do it, and then I'll explain some of the different caveats, some things to look out for, and how to change the macro that we are, yes, unfortunately, going to have to use in order to do this. So let's take a look at this data first. It's a very simple sample data, just some part numbers here, and then I have a column with cell colors. It doesn't matter if these colors are by themselves like they are here, or if you have text in them, none of that matters. The very first step, the very first thing you want to do is to add a new column next to your color column. Now you can put this column wherever you want. Later on, we can hide it. I'll show you how to do that, very easy. But it's easier if you keep everything really close. So go to the next column, hit insert, Let's go ahead and clear all of that. So we can go to Home tab, Editing, Clear All, or Clear Formats, doesn't matter. And now, very, very simple, very cool. Let's select the cells that have color that we might want to do something with using the sum function, sum if or sum ifs function. Now, download this file and get the macro that I'll cover later. And now what we can do is hit Alt F8 to go to the macro window. List colors, that's our macro, hit run. It's going to now put all of the numbers right here. Now, before I show you how to use the macro, if you just download this workbook and you use the macro as it is right now, your empty column will need to be directly to the right of the column with all of the colors that you selected. Otherwise, it's going to overwrite that data. And I'll show you how to change that feature later. So now what we have here, it's really awesome. We have a number that represents all of the colors. And that's all you need to do some ifs. So we can go over here, we can do a very simple sum if now, let's say equals sum if. Let's select these cells right here, not the color cells, these cells with the number. Then let's say for the criteria, let's say we only want the yellow cells. So we can either enter the number 65535, five, or you could select this cell. So we could go like this. Now, some range, well, let's see, do we want to do size, quantity, whatever you want to do. Let's say we want to do quantity, close, enter, and now we have nine. You can see yellow, three, and yellow, six, and that equals nine. So it's pretty simple, but it does require the use of a macro. So all that we had to do, if you look at the steps required, add a new column, select the column that has the colors, or the cells with the colors, run the macro, then we get a lovely number representing the color, then use this number to create our sum if and sum ifs functions. Now if you want, that's an ugly column, you don't want it there, go ahead and hit hide, and it's no longer there. You can see it goes A, B, D, but our formula still works no problem. So now the end user or your coworker doesn't have to see this column with all these funky numbers and wonder what the hell is going on and then mess up your whole spreadsheet because they are confused. Now, if this does everything that you want it to do for you, go ahead, download the workbook, and just use it like that. You can copy the macro, paste it into your own workbook. You don't have to watch anymore. But now I'm going to show you how to make it work for conditional formatting. And at the end, I'll go over the macro in a little bit more depth just to explain the little bits of it if you'd like to learn more about VBA and macros and be able to customize it for your own workbook. Before I continue though, I do want to put one slightly more complicated sum ifs function right here. So this is sum if, this is going to be sum ifs. I don't want to waste your time writing it out because this tutorial is not about these functions. So here we have a sum ifs function that's going to use, where are we? I think the, okay, yeah, let's unhide this to make it a little bit easier to see. So this one is just going to use, so we have C right here. It's going to say as long as it doesn't equal this color, and you can see that I've hard-coded the color in. It's this green right here. And as long as it doesn't start with GSC. So 
that is this column for GSC and ASC, and we get 18 as the result. But now let's go ahead and try out conditional formatting. So what I'm going to do, let's just say, I'm just going to call this color number. Let's put a new column in here. Go ahead and clear the colors from here. Now let's add some conditional formatting. I'm going to make it very simple so we don't waste time. One, two, three. Okay, let's put some conditional formatting stuff. Or before that, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this cell right here. This is a very important step. Row 11, number two. I'm going to color that the exact same as this yellow right here. So let's go up here. Bucket, yellow, good stuff. Now let's select these cells. Conditional formatting, new rule. I'm going a bit fast here because I'm going to assume you already know a little bit about conditional formatting. So let's say equals the first cell greater than or equal to two. Now let's go ahead and remove the dollar sign from in front of the 10 so it will apply to all the cells correctly. It's going to be a relative cell reference. Change the formatting. Let us do it a dark blue. OK. OK. And now we have blue. Remember, there is still a background color here. There's still a background color right here under cell B11. So this is just conditional formatting. Conditional formatting just kind of covers over it. So let's select these cells again, run our macro. Oops. Run the macro. And make this a little bigger. OK. Now something very interesting. So all of this stuff is the same. But now let's go down here. There's no color here, and we get this number. But there is a color here, a conditional formatting color, and we still get the number for white. But for this one here, we get 65, 535. Why is that? Well, because it's yellow, just like this. Yellow, yellow. So we get that number. It's just that you cannot see that yellow. And over here, this didn't work to return the correct value for conditional formatting. It just went straight to the background. So with the current line of code in the macro that we're going to cover shortly, it didn't work for conditional formatting. So now let's add one more column right here. Go ahead and clear everything. Let's call this guy color number two. OK. And now let's go check out the macro. So Alt F11 goes to the VBA window. This is the macro. That's all it is. It is super tiny, super simple, super easy. So I'll cover the macro. I'll explain how this loop works and what the C means and the offset and all that jazz in a moment. But for now, let's just make a simple note, a simple comment here. Cell, let's say, OK, background color. And I'll put a little note, won't return conditional formatting colors. OK, so this is the one that we just had. And now we need a new one. So the new one, I'm going to put it just right under it. You'll see it's almost exactly the same. We're going to do C dot offset 0 comma 1 dot value equals C dot display format dot interior dot color. So it's almost exactly the same, except for in front of interior, we add display format. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to comment this out. So now this code will not run, but our new code will run. And let's see what that looks like. So let's go back to the Excel window, Alt F11, or click this dude up here. And let's hit select our colors. Alt F8, OK, run it, make it bigger. OK, so now once we go down, down here, we can see white is white, yes. But now these are different. So no more white and no more yellow. Here it has shown the conditional formatting color. So here, think of it this way. We now get the value of the color that is currently visible. Conditional formatting is visible over the yellow here, here, so we get this value. This is currently the visible value here, not white, so we get this value. 
Now it's very important to mention that a lot of tutorials will only show you the second line, the second VBA line that I just showed you with display format but maybe you need to know the actual background color, not conditional formatting color. Maybe you need to know the conditional formatting color just, or just the visible color. So depending on which line of code you use, you're going to get these, get these different results. And that's very important to take note of. Let's go ahead and call this color number three. Okay, go back to the VBA window, Alt F11. I'm gonna put a little note here. Let's call it visible cell color. Okay, I feel like making that capitalized. So, will return conditional formatting colors. Now, it's just going to return the visible conditional formatting colors, not any other colors that may be applied if other conditions are going to happen or yada, yada, yada. So I'm keeping the description rather simple here, and I'm going to keep both lines of code here in the workbook. So this way, you're not going to need to write anything out. Just download the workbook, use it, and figure out if you need to use this line of code or this line of code and go with that, or add whatever logic you want to it. And that's really all there is to this macro, and there, that's all there is to summing cells based on their cell color. You just add a new column, run the macro to get a number that represents the color, and do all of your formulas based off of the new column. Now I'm going to talk about a little issue you may run into if you get code from the web or from somewhere else, because there's a lot of examples out there, and they're not all so good. So, okay, new column, clear formats. Go ahead, just make sure it's selected. Okay, let's go back to the macro. A lot of times you will see this color index instead of color. So let's go back here and run that. Okay, I'll select the cells, Alt F8, enter. Now we got this lovely thing here, didn't we? So this is another way to represent colors. I'm gonna call it an old crappy stupid way. <laughs> Because, let's zoom in a little bit here, it may look okay at first, but notice that this gray, which is visibly different than this gray, has the same number, 15 and 15. Notice that this, however, is a much different number than this. So if you see color index, do not use that. Just delete the index from it. So let's go back to the VBA window, delete the index, bye-bye index. Now we have a number that more accurately represents the color. I'm going to go ahead and leave that column in the workbook. Let's go back there. And I'm going to, let's zoom out, color index example, bad. Maybe I should delete that column, but as long as you watch the video, you'll understand what it is and what it means and why not to use it. At this point in the tutorial, I want to go back to the macro and briefly tell you how it works. So what we have here are just a couple things. First of all, selection. And then we have a for each loop or the for each loop and then selection. Now, this loop right here is a very super simple way for each C. Now, C can be any word, by the way, but C is an easy way to represent cell. So for each, whatever variable name you put here, in selection, that means the cells that you have selected, loop through them. When you finish going through one cell, go to the next one. Now, C, it can be named anything that a variable name can have. So don't get thrown off by this. And selection is a selection of cells that you make. So I make a selection of cells, and then in VBA, I can reference that selection by using this word selection. Then I use a for each loop to say for each item in this selection, go through it one by one. Now when I'm inside the loop, how do I represent each item? Well, I put the name that I want to use to represent each item right here. So once we're in this loop, I can now reference the cell each cell in the selection, one at a time. If you want to make your life a little bit easier, by the way, we can declare the variable up here and declare it as a range. Dim C as a range. So C, 
C, C, and now we go in here, we can type C, dot, and all the lovely things that we can do with it. So once you've declared it up here, dim C as a range, because that's the object, it's going to be a range object. So now we can start to type offset. You can see offset fills in there. And what that says is it says the current cell. We're looping through the cells. Okay, I got this cell, but I want to go one cell to the right of it. So I figure out how, by how much I have to offset the current cell's position. Well, I don't want to change the row, so I put zero for the row offset, then comma one for the column offset. That is what, let's go back here, put the value. When I select the cells here, these are the cells that are being looped through. We go to the first cell, and then we offset it by one, so it goes over here to our empty column, and it does something with that. So that's how you change into which column the number will be input. So if I want it to go in two columns over or 10 columns over to output this number, then in the code for offset, I just say two or 10 or whatever I want. So we're gonna put it to one cell to the right, one column to the right. Now, how do I reference what's inside of a cell? Just type value. Now, how do I change what's inside a cell? Once I've written what I just wrote, put an equal sign. Now, whatever I put here, hi, it's going to input into that cell. So if I offset this by 10, is that enough? Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then comment this out. Now what it's going to do is output high or input high into every row for every cell that we selected 10 columns to the right. So select and now over here column L should have high. So run the macro. Perfect. So that's how you choose where you want the data to go. Now what data do we want to put in there? Well Let's reference the cell with the color, which is the cell that was selected, which is the cell cell we are looping through, the range we are looping through. How do we reference the cell? Remember, C. What do we want to do with it? Type a period, start typing. We can see that it's filling in, so we're doing a good job. Hit tab to select that option, then color. That's all there is to it. And if you want to have the conditional formatting one work, you can do display format in front of interior. So instead of c.interior.color, let's type the period. There we go. Display format dots interior dot color. And that's all there is to it. So I will go ahead and delete this line. It's no longer useful. And I will leave this one uncommented down here so that you can use it. If you don't have any conditional formatting within your workbook or your worksheet, this line is probably the best one to use. Or if you have conditional formatting, but you have no background colors, or basically if you just want the visible cell color, go ahead and use this guy. It's probably going to work most of the time. But that's all there is for this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful and learned a lot. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.